How important are transitions in video editing? How smart choices of transitions and cuts can make your videos more engaging? And what are the types of transitions out there? You'll find out if you watch this video till the very end. Hi, my name is Roman and this is the Movavi Vlog, your go-to channel for making great videos. For this episode, I've prepared a list of 10 most essential video transitions every YouTube creator should know. Let's roll! Transitions play a very big role when it comes to keeping the interest of your audience and increasing audience retention. I'm not talking about these fancy visual effects with diamonds, geometric figures, some foodie stuff that serve as transitions. I'm talking about a more pro level of understanding transitions as tools that you, as a YouTube creator, have. Transitions that don't just sit there but really help your video become more interesting and add depth to your content. I call them 10 major types of transitions and cuts every YouTube creator should know. Hard cuts. And the very first type of transition is a common hard cut. When you take a frame from one scene, then a frame from the second scene and just join them with each other. But don't just uh, carelessly cut clips into parts or join different clips together. Always think about, well, what you're showing to the viewer and don't make your audience bored with extra information that has nothing to do with the video. There must always be some kind of logic behind any simple cut, especially if you use a simple type of cut like a hard cut. That's why it's important to have a clear script or at least a structure of what you're filming so that when you get to editing, you'll have a clear list with scenes in the right order. That way, you can understand what to show to the viewer and what not to show, and the hard cut will create a cinematic effect, not look like you're new to video editing and don't know any other cuts yet. Cutting on action Cutting on action is a transition from one frame to another at the moment of the action on the screen. It can be a hit, punch or strike, it can be a simple walk, it can be a dance. The main thing is to cut at the moment of some action. For example, you have a scene where an athlete punches a punching bag. Here you can cut at the moment when he's moving his hand away. Or you can cut in the moment when uh, his hand is moving towards the back. Or you can cut in the moment it hits the target. Changing the angle at the moment the hand is approaching the back would be more interesting than when the hand punches it. Big cause. In the first case, you switch from action to action rather than from statics to statics. When you make transitions from statics to statics, it adds an extra moment and in the end it stretches the perception of that movement in time a little bit, making it less action-like. So use cutting on action when you want to make action scenes. It will keep the viewer more engaged. Jump cut. Jump cut looks something like this. Of course, that was an exaggerated example, but on YouTube, bloggers use it way too often. This is because the creators want to increase the audience retention of their videos and keep them interesting. For example, you are talking about something for a very long time on camera. Obviously, there will be moments in the original footage that are better to cut off and you understand that on the editing stage, then you select them and delete. Or when you are stammering a lot and getting distracted while recording a video, you also cut it out because why would the viewer watch it? Next, you end up covering it all behind the jump cut. And sometimes there is just too many of them. Well, I advise you to try to hide jump cuts as much as possible. When there are any cutaways, it's better to put those cutaways on the jump cuts. It would look more professional. Or use the second option. You can crop the frame to create a sense of the second angle. But jump cuts have a more specific application as well. You can use them for a comic effect or vice versa for a more creepy look. For example, we see a hall or a room and at some moments an unknown person appears there or some scary figure. Well, now that's creepy. 
Another option for a specific use of jump cut, it's for example, when a character in a video is sitting and thinking about something. And in this example, you can use jump cuts to delete the moves of the actor so it feels like he's sitting for a long time like this and thinking about something. That is, we kind of jump through time and it creates a feeling of a long period of time. So jump cuts are definitely a cool tool, but use them properly. Next in line is the J cuts. They are called so because of the shape of the English letter J, which basically draws the shape of that transition as it looks on the timeline in the video editing software. You've definitely seen this type of transition in movies. It's when the next frame's audio track starts a little bit earlier than it's supposed to be and goes beyond the first frame's video clip. For example, Note that this isn't some kind of super fancy Hollywood cut. It's simple in its design, but how natural and seamless it looks. So you know what I mean by now, right? It's very easy to make a J cut. You need to expand the audio clip of the next clip under the first clip for just a few seconds. It's a good way to immerse the audience in what's happening and give them a little bit of a hint of what's about to happen on the screen in the next moment. And that leads us to the next type of cut, L-cut. L-cut is essentially the same as J-cut, only the opposite, because the English letter L also draws the shape of this type of transition. Only now it looks the other way. So the audio of the first frame will follow us to the next frame. LCAs are necessary for dialogue scenes. For example, you have two people talking to each other and there are certain moments when you need to take a little pause to show the viewers the person's reaction to what the first person says. So instead of using a simple hard cut after the end of the phrase and before the beginning of the next phrase of the second person, sometimes you need to show this first reaction of the second person to what the first person says in order to show the mood before the second person responds. Sometimes it can be relevant when you're filming yourself. For example, you're shooting a vlog and you're constantly changing location. In this case, you can make an L cut when you switch from one location to another. It will look very engaging and seamless. Cutaways. You probably know what cutaways are. Basically, there are extra shots of something and they cover up the main action or subject in the frame. But I want to go a little bit deeper into the meaning of cutaways and why use them. So you won't use cutaways just because you can or just put some random footage on upper tracks to hide a long shot. What could be the point of the cutaways? Well, imagine that you have a transition from one scene where two people are talking to each other to another scene where some other characters are already going somewhere. And instead of roughly cutting from the close-up of some person from the first scene to the action of other characters going somewhere, you can go for a more creative solution. Instead, you can start the second scene with showing the environment where these characters are traveling, even before revealing the characters. This will give the viewer a better idea of where these characters are and how they can interact with that place. This is a deeper dive into the story and its context. Also, you can end the scene in about the same way. Imagine there's a character that shoots at something, something specific. And when you don't want to show that specific rifle shot, you can switch to a wide shot of a camera showing birds flying away and then the viewers hear the sound of that rifle shot in the background. So we as viewers see not just a particular rifle shot itself, but how the shot affects the environment of this scene and how it feels being there close to the shooter. It's also a deeper dive into what's happening on the screen. Besides, it just looks more interesting. When we see a close-up of a person and then we see a wide shot, it looks more cinematic. I recommend you to shoot as many different cutaways as possible and on the editing stage, watch how these cutaways can add more context to your story, to your videos. But do not use cutaways just for the sake of cutaways. Cross cuts. 
A crosscut, also known as parallel editing, can be a very powerful tool to hold the attention of your viewers. Parallel editing can be done in three ways, but the essence is the same. Fragments of two or more parallel actions are shown one by one and moved to some final point. For example, this can be often found in thrillers, in chasing scenes, or when two people are talking on the phone with each other. It is often used in the final scene of a movie because the tension is rising and we are watching one action first, then another, then we go back to the first one, and so on. This tension leads us to some climax where everything usually ends. That's why it's quite a powerful tool, because the viewer doesn't fully know what's going to happen in the end, where several actions meet each other and it simply holds the attention. So, in order to do a crosscut, you will need to shoot the first action, then the second one, and then literally on a paper highlight the points, where to finish the first action and where to start the second. And the first action has to end at some very suspenseful moment, like some chase is interrupted, or the character asks a question we has, which has no answer yet, and then the second action starts. And so they replace each other until the very end. This can be done through regular cutting, or you can use the technique of split screen. That is, we see two or more actions within one frame simultaneously. And the third way is when you can combine split screen with regular cutting. And I strongly recommend using this method if you want to show two or more different actions in different locations. Match cut. Probably the most catchy transition in movies is the match cut. It's when the action or subject at the end of the first frame matches the action or subject in the second frame. It can be any action or subject. Or, for instance, we see someone jumping in the first frame and at the moment of the jump we change to the frame where another person jumps. This can be done with either standard cutting or using graphics. And here it's also very important to think about sound design. After all, the sound design can create a smooth flow from one scene to another. Montage or rapid cuts is basically cutting a lot of short clips even from different scenes with some music in the background. It's a good way to rapidly show the development of the character in your video. For example, in your video through a monologue or a dialogue, you're telling about a preparation for an important upcoming event. It's not necessary to show the whole process of preparation. You can save time and just highlight the most flashy moments using rapid cuts and background music. It's interesting to watch, it's very engaging, it shows the development of the character and events around. Fade in and fade out. As a rule, this method is implemented by changing the picture to a dark screen or appearance from a black screen. It is believed that in one movie one should use no more than four such transitions. Unless, of course, you use it as a stylistic device. By the way, have you ever wondered why there are usually a lot of such transitions in the movie trailers? Of course, there is a certain sense in that. For a second, imagine a trailer without these fates. It would be a mismatch of short fragments of the movie, after watching which the viewer would not understand anything. This is what the movie creators don't want at all. That's why these smooth fade-ins and fade-outs are used, to separate specific scenes. In your videos, you can use it in a different way, for example, to start and finish the video. It will look quite spectacular. You've probably already realized that you don't necessarily have to use any fancy transitions and cuts to surprise your audience. The main thing is to think about what you're trying to say to your viewers when you use a certain transition and how appropriate a certain cut would look in a particular scene. If, however, you still need additional visual transitions with cool graphics and animation, then in Movavi Video Editor you will find a lot of options. And in the Movavi Effects Store there are even more stylish transitions. 
you will find a link to the program in the description of this video. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. My name is Roman. This was the Movavi vlog. I'll see you very soon. Bye.